wanted to make a video to share with you how the Pennsylvania Standards Aligned System website works. This website is developed for teachers in Pennsylvania to find the Common Core standards used to teach in their classrooms. And one of the things that happened to this website is in December of 2015, they re-established the site to only represent the Common Core curriculum for the state. And this was a change because prior to this change, they still had the old Pennsylvania standards and the new Common Core standards, and they were at two different places. And honestly, the site was very confusing. Um, but the Pennsylvania has made the switch 100% to Common Core at this point, and they've realigned everything on this website. So I'm going to show you what it looks like to search for standards to do some lesson planning. And I'm going to base today's search off of an activity I would do with the book Goldie Luck and the Three Pandas that I shared this week in our presentation. Now in that book, um, we had a cultural version of the traditional Goldilocks. And so I'm going to uh, think in my head as I go into this lesson that I want to create a lesson plan around comparing the traditional Goldilocks to our cultural Goldilocks. And I'll show you what I would do. Now, you might visit this website not having any idea in your mind about what you want to teach. And this website can tell you what's appropriate for the grade level of learner you're working with. But if you do know, you have an idea in your mind, you have to figure out where to find the standards that make this an appropriate lesson. So I'm going to show you that process. First of all, a quick Google search for PASAS gets you to the web address. And you'll click that. And if you've been here before, you, it, you can tell it looks really different. And so um, it still has the flower, and that's what we're going to start with. So go to Standards. And once you're in Standards, you're going to do View Standards. And I'm going to choose our grade level and subject. And for this lesson, I'm going to pick first grade. And then choose your subject area. And for everything in our course, Education 270, you want to choose English Language Arts. That's our reading and our writing and our speaking and our listening. And now we're ready to go. Now, on this website, you're going to see, first, everything is organized into a subject area. And that's what you just selected, English Language Arts. That is Common Core Subject 1. And that CC1 is the anchor that shows you that. Underneath the subject area, you'll find several blue bars that say standard area and have a skill, a big, gigantic skill area. And then everything that is going to show for us today is going to be for grade level one. So you can see the numbers getting larger. We have common core subject area one. Now we have common core subject area one, standard area one. And now we have grade level added, which is grade level one. So that, that little number right there and letter, that is our anchor. And you'll see it growing for each one of these. Now, on our lesson plan, you're going to be asked to put in the subject area, which is English language arts, the standard area, which will be everything after that dash. You'll put the anchor and the area and a little definition. And then you'll choose in the white area a standard for your lesson plan. And you'll write all everything you find in that standard box as well. That's what you're going to use to write your objective. Now, I don't want standard area one for my lesson, so I'm going to keep scrolling down. There are five standard areas in first grade English language arts. So I'm going to focus on the third standard area. And this is reading literature. Students read and respond to works of literature with emphasis on comprehension, making connections among ideas and between texts with focus on textual evidence. And I know in my mind I want to do that comparison between the two Goldilocks versions, and I, heard, I saw the words making connections among ideas and between texts, and so I knew that I was in the right area. Now, if you don't know what you want to teach, you can see by looking at these standards, you can come up with something that would be appropriate for your lesson. Maybe we want them to retell something. Maybe we want them to describe characters or setting. 
So you can just, just get on here and find something you like and base your lesson plan around it. Or do what we're doing, taking what we want to do and finding the standard. So there's two different ways to go about this. Now I would look through here and I'm, I think this standard is the best. Standard Common Core um, 1.3.1H. So we've kind of broken that down bigger and bigger. And I would write down in my standard area on my lesson plan, compare and contrast the adventures and experiences of characters and stories. And this is going to give me the ability to look at the Goldilocks, Goldilocks story and the Goldilocks story and pick out um, things that are the same and things that are different for one or more of the characters. Now, I just wanted to share with you kind of a couple extensions. If you go back, to our flower and you go into standards again there's probably an easier way to do it I just did but you'll see there's a choice for the vertical viewer and I just wanted to show you something neat when you look vertically the vertical viewer gives you the ability to look at the same standard across grade levels so I'm going to go back in and select everything the same go back to first grade and back to English Language Arts. And now I can see all of the skills for English Language Arts for first grade, but they're not broken down into standards like they were before. So I'm going to go down and go back to this standard. This was our third standard that we were in before. When I click on it, it brings up this neat chart. And this shows kindergartners in this standard area. Here's our standard. Remember, we talked about that a minute ago. It talks about what kindergartners do for this standard, what first graders do, and what second graders do. So I'm going to find the exact, we were at H, if you remember the little anchor told us H, and there it is, compare and contrast the adventures and experiences of characters and stories. So that's the first grade standard. Now, if you wanted to do the same lesson in kindergarten, the standard would be a little different. Well, actually, they're the same. Sometimes they're the same. This says familiar stories, and first grade says just stories. So it might be something they hadn't heard before. And then look at this. I think this is so neat. When you go to second grade, it says compare and contrast two or more versions of the same story by different authors or from different cultures. So it even puts in that cultural piece that we're looking at. But either way, it doesn't matter. But I was showing you how the skill grows by grade level. If you want to go back to pre-K and see what they're doing, you'd click here. If you want to go up to third and fourth grade, you'd click here. So that is a really neat aspect of that vertical viewer, especially for those of you that aren't sure what grade level you want to teach. You can pick an idea and then get to the vertical viewer and kind of see what grade level would be best for your lesson. Now, the last thing I want to show you is the curriculum framework. And this is a little tricky. And honestly, I think this is a flaw with this website is I think they should link you right to it, but they don't. They have made it slightly easier than before, though. The curriculum framework is where on your lesson plan, um, not for this activity, but when we do our lesson plans in a couple weeks, the hack lesson plan asks for the big idea and the essential question that go along with the lesson. And a lot of times teachers are asked to write the big idea and the essential questions on their whiteboard boards or their smart boards at the start of every lesson. So students know, why am I doing this? What is the question I should be able to answer at the end of our lesson today. So I want to show you where to find that. Based on everything we've done, the third step now will be go, going into that curriculum framework. And unfortunately, we have to go back through this process again. And we'll pick first grade. And in the subject area, we'll pack, pick English language arts. You'll know where it is real well by the time you get here. And now we'll scroll down into the curriculum framework. And it starts with big ideas. What is the big idea? And the one thing they've done to help break this down that wasn't on their old website is they break down the big ideas um, a little bit by what we were looking at with the standard area, the grade level, and then which kind of standard we were in. So we were in first grade. We were in English language arts. And now we have to find the area we were in. 
We weren't in listening and speaking. We weren't in foundational skills. We were in, let's see, integration of knowledge and ideas. And there were a few of those up above, but um, I've learned that the further down, if since we're on standard three, um, you have to kind of go down a little lower. I don't know why, but it does kind of go from the top of the standards to the bottom. So we're going to hit it here. Effective, you, effective readers use appropriate strategies to construct meaning. And that is going to be our big idea. So if your lesson plan asks for the big idea, it's the part in the, the box here. And when you click on it, it will show you three or more essential questions. And then you basically have to take a guess which one it will be and try it out. So I think it's going to this, be this one. How does interaction with text provoke thinking and response? Because really by comparing those two stories, we're interacting with the text and we're making them really think outside the box. And then we bring up our concept, competencies, vocabulary, and our standard. And that's what we want right there. There's our standard, Common Core 131H. And there is our standard to compare and contrast the adventures and experiences of characters and stories. So for the curriculum alignment, the big idea I showed you above, and now the essential question is right here. How does interaction with text provoke thinking and response? Sometimes they'll have vocabulary here for you. For this specific one, you'd use vocabulary from the story. But that's how you align the curriculum on your lesson plan form. Um, so you find how to, you find your subject area, you find your grade level, you find your standard area, you find your standard, you find your big idea, you find your question, essential question. All of that is on this website. Um, so I know that was a quick overview, but hopefully that'll help you get started. Uh, I'll be quite honest, um, it's trial and error. Uh, use this as your springboard, but you're going to make mistakes. You're going to find yourself not in the right area sometimes. Just play around with it. It's for Pennsylvania, so um, it is here to stay if you're going to work in Pennsylvania for a while. Um, and like I said, they've made a lot of improvements to the website. So hopefully this video will help you get started with your lesson planning. Remember, as always, if you have a question, please let me know and I'll help you out.